It's hard to imagine in the 21st century these quiet streets echoing to the sounds of war. But ancient Hepton Stall village, high above the West Yorkshire town of Hebden Bridge, was once an important strategic location in the story of the English Civil War. The Battle of Hepton Stall in 1643 is the subject of a new community play to be performed in the village at the end of February 2019. It's not unusual for local people to still dig up cannonballs and musket balls 350 years later. There wasn't much of a settlement in the valley at that time, which was marshy and largely uninhabitable. But the villagers here were supporters in 1643 of the parliamentary cause, and that put them at odds with Halifax, which supported the royalists. In 2010, on the occasion of the 500th anniversary of the construction of the Hebden Bridge Packhorse Bridge, members of the Sealed Knot reenacted two skirmishes that have since become known as the Battle of Hepton Stall. The first one, a victory for the parliamentarians and centering on the flooded River Hebden. In fact, many Cavalier soldiers ended up drowned there. November the 1st, 1643, the date when civil war came on villagers were forced to flee their homes in the face of a royalist onslaught of 400 musketeers and 400 cavalry intent on flushing out parliamentary sympathizers. But these royalists weren't too lucky. Stormy winds and heavy rain lashed the hillside and many of these men were swept away in the swollen current. And it's this period of history and the way local people responded to events around them that has become the inspiration for a community play in 2018. A Hepton Stall resident, writer and director, Michael Crowley, has brought together many people from the local area and formed a Battle of Hepton Stall theatre company, The Brutish Multitude. The play will be performed in the village's fine Victorian stone church with financial support from Sky Arts as part of their Art 50 festival. There was a great deal of excitement just before Christmas 2018. It was the first day that actors had received their costumes. A Sky Television crew was coming up from London to capture some of the scenes from the play. Down in the dead, where flowers do grow, and birds do sing, all in a row. A brisk young man met with a maid and laid her down all in the shade. This year, 2018, is the 375th anniversary of the Battle of Hepton Stall that took place in November 1643. And we, at this stage, have a script in progress, nearing the end. We have a cast and we have uh, a location in which to perform it. And St Thomas the Apostle Church is the ideal location um, about a year and a half ago, there was a conversation between myself and some other people in the village, and we formed a voluntary organisation, the Brutish Multitude, which is a term that Cromwell's spin doctor gave to the ordinary people who were represented at the Putney debates by the levellers and, and, and their demand for um, universal male suffrage at that time. Uh, began applying for funding and thinking about a community play we have, uh, this very day, um, formed a cast after three or four weeks of auditions, and there is a script um, almost complete, and rehearsals begin next Wednesday here. You must have believed your life was lost. I was prepared. My heart was ready. And when they whipped me, I prayed. Because you have such faith. I want to be as strong as you, Edmund. Will you teach me? What makes you think I can? Tis the reason you are here. I'm here because I escaped a gibbet and I got into the woods. The show will have both period music and original music composed and arranged by our musical director, Katie Chapman. Although I am a country lass, a lusty mind I bear. 
We're going to tell the story through the lives of local people rather than kings and, and, and generals. And I've chosen a clothing family, a family of clothiers. This is so important around here and it was actually important in Yorkshire in terms of the war. And John Cockcross Cottage will be here in this space. Um, we'll see if we can get a, a loom or a mock loom. And I suppose John's narrative, and rather than picking sides for the conflict, I decided to come in after sort of the research really on the basis of a statement from someone at the time that most men in England are neither hot nor cold. And this family story really is how to keep the war at bay. They just want to make a living. They just want to get by. But inevitably, because there wouldn't be a play if it wasn't the case, he and his family are dragged into the conflict. Just a horse to horse into the next neck. neck. Get beneath the beast! Stay on your feet, lad! Keep digging into the horse! What is this? The sides of the church, either, either side there, we will, I think, use for stage left, the Royalist General, Mackworth, who was, um, had occupied Halifax with an army and eventually tried to come to Heptonstall and we'll put the royalist cause to the audience. A whole people think popery at their doors. Scandalous pamphlets pour oil on the flames, calling for liberty of conscience, so-called, of houses and of men's wives. They do defame his majesty. But if anyone speak of the king's part, they are to be marked down to be killed. Upon the hilltop, there are round heads of plenty. They are in need of Christ and nightly await my cavalry. Conversely over here, uh, stage right against, under that stained glass window, we will have Colonel Bradshaw, who was the leader of the Roundhead Army, about 800 men who marched to Rehetonstall from Rochdale, and he will put uh, the case for Parliament. What does it mean to fight a king? Treason? A king that has sent his parliament away like a lord discharging his servants, believing saints will cook his supper for him. He lays with a papist plotting, with rebels turning church into a place of coloured dolls, painted walls and altar rails, where men kneeling upon their own minds do recite some scroll by the Archbishop Lord. Kings are not God. We do not seek to slay him, make him a ghost behind palace walls, but we shall sit at a table beside a fire of the relics and the yoke. High birth and unearned wealth shall fall. We make our stand hereafter at Heptonstall. Cloth, is a, cloth making is a reasonable income. There was a cloth hall in, in the village. Um, one story at that time and becoming two story um, in the 18th century. But they're, they're, they're doing okay as a lot of people were in, in the West Riding. Uh, but their lives are totally disrupted. Cloth hall closes, the supply of fleeces begins to dry up as livestock is plundered. Excerpts from the show will be filmed around the anniversary of the battle in here by Sky and shown as part of a TV uh, television program that will be uh, released in the spring of 2019. The full play itself will be uh, produced in here three or four nights in February 2019. Over here, um, where the pulpit is and the lectern is at the moment, we will use this space for uh, a location in, towards Widdop and it's going to be a cottage of, occupied by three women who are spinners of yarn. Um, and the term spinsters, which I think comes from around the 1400s, is used to describe them by, by other people. They live independently of men and they can make enough yarn in a few days that would occupy a weaver for a week. And whilst John and his family are 
ambivalent at best, really, about either side in the conflict. This village can do what it likes. My fight is to put food on the table. These, these women are Puritans, seekers, which were the precursors of Quakers. Um, they do not attend church. They're not fine for it because not too many people know they're here. And they are evangelists, I suppose, is, is um, the broad term. Seekers was a movement um, of uh, radical Protestantism at the time. Come ye after me, and I will make you fishers of men. But also I want to bring in, I suppose, the poor, the commoners, is a generic term, the crowd, if you like, who are caught between looking at Bradshaw, looking at Mackworth, and really their concern is neither high church or evangelism, it's really about have you got, who's going to pay me, have you got something to eat? Because a lot of the research that I've come across is that people were motivated to join either army actually, rather particularly poor people, not so much taking a side for king or parliament, but simply who, who would pay them. The interest of Sky Arts and the timing of the production at the beginning of March 2019, just before the official date for Britain's planned exit from the European Union, is no coincidence. This period of history, just like the time of the English Civil War, will always be seen as a time of social discord, when many people considered, rightly or wrongly, the sovereignty of Parliament to be threatened on an issue that undoubtedly split apart the views of the nation. Indeed, throughout Britain, family members and friends have found themselves at loggerheads. However, that is about as far as you can take the analogy, because 85,000 English parliamentary and royalist soldiers died fighting over the course of the English Civil War, and the death tolls of soldiers in Scotland and Ireland, not to mention mercenaries from other countries, made the list even longer. However, there is no list of how many local people were killed or had their lives totally ruined, through a whirlwind of events that overtook them. Michael Crowley's this community play addresses the way that ordinary people often found themselves haplessly swept into arguments about which they previously had little or no interest and whose consequences in the end would change their lives forever. It's no accident that the phrase a world turned upside down originates from experience of that time. When the Royalists set fire to 14 local people's houses in Hepton Store, we know that the parliamentary troops had already abandoned the village and left for Rochdale. So, for instance, this musket ball, discovered by metal detectors in a field in Slack, was more than likely fired at innocent villagers left fleeing for their lives than any parliamentary soldiers. These burning houses were not only people's homes. They contained the spinning wheels that villagers used to spin their arm and the hand looms upon which they wove their cloth. Their destruction could easily have driven people into penury or at worst starvation. That's why this play has such an important message, not just about that period of history, but perhaps it has something to say for people today. Strange there were such days when brother killed brother, when friend wished death upon friend. God has given men unto a craze, Reason is drowned and mute as the fishes. The performances of this play on Thursday the 28th of February, 1st of March and Saturday the 2nd of March 2019 in St Thomas's Church in Hepton Store at 7.30pm and the cost of a ticket is £10. There is also a lecture at Hebdenbridge Town Hall on the history of the battle itself on Monday, February the 4th. Tickets for both the play and the lecture are available through Eventbrite.